No delay? No. We're gonna have delay for the upcoming matches though. In the finals uh, of the winner bracket, loser bracket, we're gonna have a delay. But once again, I'm not a big fan of the delay uh, and I am trying to avoid putting delay on the streams in the tournaments I am organizing. Because for me, live stream is live. Like, this has to be happening right now. You know, I don't like to watch soccer games also with like 5 minutes delay. I don't like that. For me, this is life. The life needs to be, when I say something, you need to hear it at the same time and not like 2 minutes later. I don't like this kind of interactions. Or oh, they stayed as randoms, I was not paying attention, man. We gotta do that also for the next one. May stream snipe like a noob. <laughs> but players can open the stream. Yeah, but trust me, it's not as easy as ma many of you guys <clears throat> might think, you know. It's not like you open the stream, you have of course always some delays in the stream and you might be able to scout the positioning of the resource buildings from your opening, which is kind of obvious. Like, look at this positioning, like, you don't need to scout to actually see that happening. Like, building your first uh, resource building around the fortress with a production building is kinda very standard, you know what I'm saying? Dwarves building mineshaft into the Hall of Warriors is also very standard. But it's a very offensive playstyle already from uh, Major of X, I like that. He's gonna get those Guardians inside the jeans. And they're gonna get alt, and that's gonna be a very, very early attack. And look at this, Mustafa has nothing prepared just yet. He has nothing to defend himself, and this one Guardian is gonna hit like a truck. Okay. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be massive, massive damage. Now the Furnace, very smart move from Mustafa. He knows he can protect that. He's demolishing that in time to get 50% of the money back. And, and also, the, uh, you know, trying to deny his opening the power points and experience points he's looking for. Also, this one has to get demolished the second. They are approaching. Okay, so he's taking a lot of damage from the Fortress. But forcing Isengard to demolish two of the three Furnaces is pretty massive and this guardian start early guardian start from the early hall of warriors was actually paying off a lot and look at the pressure very weird choice from the uh, from the isengard player to start with the white of talent because white of talent are no match against guardians guardians are gonna kill them in no time clan setting look at the damage from the guardians guys that's kind of insane amount of damage am i right crossbow man now just use the bombard i believe that's the best thing you can do and imagine that the Guardians are almost winning this even though they were badly damaged from the Fortress. That's how strong they are. I mean, very surprising move definitely from Major of X. And Mustafa was definitely not prepared for this. Look the pressure. Look the pressure he's putting on the Isengard. Like 24-7 pressure, pressure, pressure. He was able to uh, defend this furnace which is very needed. And if he loses the Vipman of Thunland, uh, or the clan setting rather, it's gonna hurt him even more. I believe he will lose it anyway. And he has only one and a half battalion of Vipman of Thunland units on the field. Yeah, he's gonna be losing that. Use charge attack before you go down. Use it. Just get it on cooldown. Nice charge attack. It's gonna give you the chance to trample down the enemy units like he did. And these Guardians, dude, they refuse to die. Decent amount of damage dealt. Two furnaces demolished. One furnace almost taken down and... Also, the clan sitting was destroyed from the Dwarven player, so a great start into the first game from Major of X, but now he has to keep snowballing his lead. Even though during all this time he was never expanding, he has one single mineshaft at the bottom side and one at the top side, so he has only three mineshafts, so he's not ahead at all against the Isengard player. They have the same command points right now. And he might even lose the Builder. The Builder lost his way, he is not in the range to build a wall hub. Luckily, he is fast, and Dwarven Builders they have also more vision, by the way. In compared to the other builders from all the other factions. So keep that in mind. Okay. What you can do in this matchup as Isengard is always buy the Kribane upgrade on the fortress for 500 resources only. And that's gonna give you an insane amount of vision control which can be extremely useful in this matchup against dwarves. So you will be able to see from the fortress of Isengard until literally around this area. So you will see the troll layer and everything else. Which means you will have always, a, you know, the vision control you need to see those Dwarven mineshafts, which can give you lots of time to react. Hey Slim Shady, my dude, welcome. Whiteman start is normal start versus Dwarves, okay. Do not let Eisen freely expand his eco, very true. So Isengard in mid game with, you know, field of fire, not field of fire, it's not even that. 
the devastation all alone is gonna give you so much money even though it got nerfed a couple of times but still devastation is like the god tier in my opinion it's almost bad it's like for me it's better than industry because industry you need to keep this furnace slash slaughterhouse protected devastation just use it and get the money instantly and that's very important this way you can actually use the money and recruit for example lord Sharku, or saruman even uh, to, you get the money boost instantly while industry you need to keep this furnace slash slaughterhouse protected for a long time to get benefit from it uh okay almost level two he will also be able to recruit some hobbits now which is not bad for major effects does he have rallying call the answer is yes and he might go for a massive attack maybe even wait for the second one but his command points kept he can't the builder is in safety i believe he's gonna build a wall hub so he's in a, he's in a good spot there is no way Isengard player can kill him. Good evening, Tilted Flame. Welcome. Okay, big attack. Rallying call is available. Gather some Axis Dwarves. Gather some Axis Dwarves. He has some Extraverse now, which is not bad against Urukai. But also not very good. Extraverse are good against Goblins and Mordor Orcs, but not very strong against those tanky units. Tanky boys like Urukai. Okay. Where is the music? Finally. The music was gone for a single second. Big commitment, boys. But he's taking so much damage from the extra ways, too. Yes, has uh, Wildman extra ways from the class setting level 2 by now. He was replacing it and upgrading that to level 2. So look at the damage he's able before and dwarves can even reach out to them, you know? But he has a lot of crossbowmen, of course, for that reason. Should be doable. But it's not bad for major effects anyway, because he was forcing the Isengard player to use the Warchan defensively. But one Wildman was able to sneak through. It's level 2, and the damage against buildings from the Wildman is kinda nuts. Even without the torches. With, no with torches, that's gonna be a similar damage boost like the Siege Hammers from the Dwarven Guardians. But it's not about the damage only, it's about the money he's able to steal. And he's gonna use the Rebuild defensively. Which is a bad thing, because that's gonna delay your 10, your 15, your 25. But on the bright side, Rebuild is gonna lead you, if you want to, later on to the Dwarven Riches from the Spellbook of Dwarves, which is gonna be similar to the to the industry from the Isengard faction or Mordor faction. But I believe Hobbit Summon is just very good, you know? Hobbit Summon, in combine for a, with a potential big attack, you can reinforce your troops with the Hobbit Summon. They are dealing lots of damage against heroes, against units. So it would be nice if you don't need to miss it. But if you have to, just go for the Dwarven Riches instead. Oh, the Builder is getting sniped down from the Crossbowman. That hurts. It's a bad fight to take for Dwarves. He's gonna lose so many units until they can make it back into the Mineshaft. Which he's not even trying. And the uh, Wildman X throwers, I believe... Correct me in the chat, but I believe the Wildman X throwers are stronger than the X throwers from the Dwarven faction. I, I'm not sure. Can't confirm or deny. They cost, uh, how much they cost? Let me check. They cost 250 each and 48 command points. And the X-Men here, they cost 250 and 60 command points. That's very interesting that they cost 12 command points more in compared to the Wildman of Dunlin from the Isengard faction. 2.02 version 8. Uh, 2.02 8.4 version beta 14. If this makes any sense. Okay. So, very interesting actually that the Wildman of the... I didn't know that. That they cost less command points. It's a Vork Sentry coming up for the defense. It's gonna eat this Builder alive, boys. Watch this now. The Vestation was used. That's the money boost from Isengard. And even after a really rough start, Isengard was actually able to get back into the game. Battle Wagon. Oh, he's gonna take down this uh, thing, I believe. Or he's gonna build up. This actually is a very strange but also effective um, defensive structure. I mean, of course, now they, he has so many units on the field, now they won't be doing too much, but like, this is very underrated and underused too. I like the work Sentry. I believe in some choke points, it can be very useful for a for a defensive structure. The Furnace is getting killed too. The Builder, I believe, was, in a, was able to get away, if I'm not mistaken. He might also reinforce the troops now with the Black Orcs. And the first hero of the day is, go <clears throat> is going to be Sharku. 
Hey, Dr. Lecter. Okay. Level 2 is going to be unlocked. He needs Spike Man. King Brain is going to be the answer of Dwarven player Mission of X. From level 1 to almost level 3 with killing only one single mineshaft. That's busted. That's really busted. And this dude has a crazy power spike once he's level 7. Oh, the builder. He's going to get in safety by building a wall up. That's a huge white man army. Where are the battle wagons when we need them? And ladies and gentlemen, now we have reached a point of the game number one in which dwarves can't do much anymore. Like what you can potentially do, go for a risky play, get into the backline with your battle wagon and trample down the extra wars. If you can do that, fine. If you can't do that, you will be outclassed, outspammed and out macroed because Isengard has the stronger units later on, has the better heroes in my opinion of course when you get Gimli level 5 and so on. But you know, Lourdes is great to stop the enemy heroes, Sharku is great for harassment, and you have of course also Saruman, one of the best heroes of the game, and has crazy eco also, with the devastation in industries, you know, fuel the fires, and even Lourdes with the pitage once he's level 8, will give you infinite sustain of your economy, which means even if you lose the fight, you can spam units all the time, you can build like 5-6 Uruk pits at once, to keep spamming units 24-7, and dwarves, they can't keep up with that. Uh, Lourdes has to be careful, he's only level 1, but yet he's like, I, I, I challenge accepted. Look Lourdes' design, dude. Look his face, boys. This guy is like having arrows in his chest, but he doesn't care. Oh, he cares now, he cares now, and Lourdes is dying, dying in a sec. Dude, do it! Right, that it's coming in, boys! Oh, not the pikeman, not the pikeman. Oh, he had the perfect opportunity right there. Run for your life, dwarves. They are, that's a huge army. Imagine a... Slam shot right in the middle of that army. That would be kind of crazy. That would be kind of crazy. We will hopefully be able to get the tournament games done later on, Dr. Lecter, between Sauron and Dugal. That's on the to-do list. They are waiting for that. And we skipped already your games, Raiden, because I couldn't reach out to you for multiple days, bro. So we already skipped your matches, unfortunately. Dwarves are so big, it's crazy. Yeah, when you fall behind. That's like, you know, this seems like that in a situation like that. But if dwarves have a lead, you will say, oh my goodness, dwarves are very busted. Because if they have a lead, the amount of snowballing they have as a faction is, is also kind of nuts. Slap shot. Boom in your face, son. Nice. Sit it down. Battle wagon is cruising, putting oil barrel on the face of the weapon extra wars. They are burning. Oh, 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 Sharku is the slayer of King Brent. The Dragon Slayer is getting slayed from a Vork Rider, and GG is gonna be called from Major of Axe as Sharku is celebrating the victory. Look, him actually swinging his sword up to the sky. I was asking them if I'm allowed to share the each edition I have right now with you guys, and he told me that I'm not able to, I'm not allowed to, and it's not my project or my file, so I'm not able to share that without per permission. And for that reason, I'm unfortunately not able to share that with you guys. But once, the second I get the permission, of course, I will do that. Any tournament matches? We will. I mean, I'm always checking the Discord. We are waiting for the for the answer from Dugal. Once again, right then we skipped many many matches in the very first round. We waited almost two weeks until some games are being played. I couldn't reach out to you, Bryden, and to many other many other people for many many days, and we had to move on since like a week. And of course, the, the, because we moved on, we won't go back anymore and start playing the games in the round of sixteen once again. That's not gonna be possible. So, I, you know, if you want to participate and play, please be a bit more active in which you can at least check every day your messages in Discord. At least let me know that you are not able to play today, but you are able to play tomorrow. But if I can't hear anything from you for two, three, four days, if I don't have any notifications or messages, I'm just assuming that you are either dead, which I'd never hope, or you are just not interested in playing. And in both the cases, I have to move on. Uh, BX Circus, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. I was type, I was tagging you multiple times, all of you guys in the Discord. You know, I can't message everyone, every 16 player in private messages. That's why you, uh, that's why we made a group of tournament players and I was tagging them, tagging them, you know? Two furnaces, three furnaces, work pit into the work packs. On the other side, we see two Malone, three stable start this time from the Elven player Mustafa. 
Stable against Vortex, and very... Why is he using the whole ability already? That's a very strange usage of that. Very early, he was using that around this side. I mean, I get it, you wanna creep, but I believe you don't need to use it that early, man. Hey, up to, uh, hey Michael Lyon, welcome. Hey, Golden Boys, relax over there, bro. We have common sense, plus being nice to each other is one of the two rules in the tournament. Uh, in the chat, I mean. Okay, Kribane was used, which is okay. You wanna, you always use Kribane when you actually start with the war packs because it's a debuff and you have the all ability which is gonna replace the war chant completely. Satanko, welcome to the stream, dude. Okay. 350 command points, and Mustafa is also 350 command points. He's running around with the lancers, but he's buying some time. That's all that matters. That's very important, by the way. Yes, it looks like he's not achieving so, too much, but he's being chased down from two battalions of war packs during this time from Major of X. And Major of X can't do anything with that right now. We have the Oh, there was a stable delete. That's why it's so important now for the for the Elven player Mustafa to keep those lancers alive. Very important. Wait a second, why is this music so quiet though? I'm actually very confused right now. Okay, now it should be better, I guess. Maybe it was because of the media player was so low. Okay, 400 command points for Isengard, 350 for Elves. He's replacing or expanding in the, at the very same time, but eventually he has to build a well for a sustain. The mirror of Galadriel has to come in clutch to heal up those lancers because they can't until they hit level 2. And they need to kill a lot to, to be level 2. All ability will be used on this warp packs. Works against Lorien archers, but in a melee fight you can't win this fight. Works are eating them alive. Hey, Wookie Talkie and Panther finally coming back from uh, from the swimming and looking look, scouting girls. Like I, I you know Panther Panther by the way guys is like Grim of Wormtongue. He's now swimming Every day to get muscles, six pack and all that good shenanigans, you know what I'm saying? And of course, the reason, the main reason, let's be real, why he's going there is to see some girls in bikinis. And he's like Grima, you know, using the escape ability to be stealthed, to scout. We will Talent scout. Alright, 400 command points available. Isengard plays 500 command points available for now. What is the goal? He's building finally the well. That's a little bit too late. And Isengard play now is going for a big attack. Does he have enough for the war chant? Uh, I don't think so, right? Nope. Not yet. Be careful with the lancers. Be careful with the lancers. Avoid the pikemen. The build also has to get in safety. Why, we don't, why don't we see work start more often? Is it that risky? Uh, it's it's good in some in some matchups, you know. No, it's not risky. It's like a very good start actually for Isengard in many matchups, I believe. I mean, I like the Warg start personally because they are a cheaper version of the Urukai. They are fast and they have, you know, the whole ability which you can combine with the Kribane of the spellbook to make them win against most of the units. And, you know, they can only not win against something like uh, Urukai or, or Half Troll Swordman or something like that. But they can win against Soldiers, Lorien Warriors. With the whole ability, of course, and the Kribin. You can win that fight easily. Be good for harassment. Good at early game units. Reliable. And then you can always go for the transition right after into the Uruk pit into some crossbow man. For some sort of defense. So I don't I don't I don't uh, disagree with the Warpack start. I believe it's very, very solid, you know? Very strong. I swim for health. Kappa. <laughs> Alright, so he's healing up over time. Lancers are almost level 2, that's great. 500 command points available for Isengard and 500 command points also available for the Elven player. Um, ideally, you want to go for the War Chant, because once again, War Chant is just so good in this game, you know? So good. The buffs are insanely powerful. I'm, I'm repeating myself, I know, but guys, being able to boost the damage and armor from any unit, group of units, because you can, it's like this area, you know, this circle around this side. That's how big Warchant is. So you are able to buff like five battalions of units at the same time with 50 damage and 50 armor in percent, which is crazy. Crazy. That's why it's so good and you don't want to miss that. Trust me on that one. 
Okay. Small attack, but I believe the Alvin player might be able to defend himself. Vork Riders now. Eventually, he will also need something like Sharku. But nice counter harassment. I like that. Very early Lumber Mills coming up now for the Isengard player. Normally, we see that very late. Once Isengard is close or has already unlocked the Heal the Fires from the Spellbook for the 70% for the more. Oh, nice trample into the backline. Keep going. Oh, here's some pikemen. Here's just move around now. Oh my goodness, what a nice micro from the red Isengard player, Mayshed of X. Dancing around the rosy. He will still lose his fight, but he was able to deal great amount of damage. Very well microed, but in the meantime, he also was losing a couple of this furnaces. And always keep one pikeman around, you know, and keep this level 2 furnace protected as well as this two, because they are all about to hit level 2 as well. So save the pikemen if you can, would be nice. They will be healing up over time since they are level 2, almost level 3. No shark on the field just yet. Sharku, I'm, you know, I was being asked why Sharku is so nice against elves. Because Sharku has splash damage and is extremely tanky against archers. And only pikemen can really take him down. He's a great hero against the enemy lancers. He's a fantastic and phenomenal hero against the enemy archers. He can sit there and tank the arrows for this. And once he's able to attack, he has the splash damage which gives him the chance to hit multiple units at the same time. That's... Ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why Sharku is so good in this matchup. Since the primary army from the Alvin faction is based on the archers, on the Mirkwood archers later on, but early on on the Lorian archers. Did Mustafa lose the lancers? Um, very good question. I think he did, yeah. I don't see them on the field anymore, unfortunately. I believe he was getting killed at the bottom right side to the pikemen. Yeah, I don't see them on the field anymore. There are no more lancers, unfortunately. But he has a hero, he has Haldir. And Haldir is the first hero in the game number 2. Mission of X versus Andy Over, yes. We, have already, we had already uh, seen 4 games yesterday and Andy Brandy had to leave, so we were just able to get the final game today. Uh, Panzer, which, is the, which was the game number 5. Between him against uh, Andy Brandy and Andy Brandy was getting goblins unfortunately in the last game. And Mishiro Fax was getting the Engmar faction, which was helping him to win the game and to move on to the losers round four. And Andy Brandy had got, get, you know, got kicked from the tournament. Long story short. It's gonna take you some time. The thing is about Haldir, guys, pay attention, he's able to hit two times, you see? Yes, he's able to hit two times, and he's getting also crazy levels from get killing one of the furnaces. Level 5 is going to be the time for the Elven hero to shine. Big commitment. Level almost 2, Malon 3 is going to get bursted time, bursted down the second he's able to commit. Maybe, I have not, you know what I've not seen for a long time? I have not seen Mirkwood arches for a really long time. I would love to see them once again. Hide the level 2. And so far, the game, the game kind of feels even... Elves, they are strong in the late game as well, but Isengard will have a crazy eco advantage. However, everything has a downside, right? So if Isengard player goes for the Devastation, you have no summon. So Elven player can go for the Mist, which gives you more power in a, in a straight fight, you know? While Devastation is gonna give you sustain in economical thing. Of course, it's also not bad because you can convert this money then later on into something like Lourdes or even Saruman, which can be game-changing heroes. Uh, but... The raw power of the PowerPoint is definitely the mist, the eagles. I mean, this is gonna be also very effective. Even though we need to also understand that elves have the worst eco in the game by far. Elves have no way of boosting the money, guys. Even Ingmar has Waldo, but elves have nothing. So that means at the end of the game, regardless who's gonna win, Isengard should be the one faction which will have the much more resource income. Elven army is leading forward. Rallying call was used. He has almost the power points he needs for the Elven mist. Hey JJ, welcome. Big fight. 825. He has now the mist. He has also black orcs on the field from the from the inn. Mist is gonna be his choice. Mist is great. Why are you asking? Glad you asking because mist, ladies and gentlemen, is leading you later on into the eagles from the spellbook. And eagles can be most of the time better. Then the end summon. Beautiful trample. He was getting, I was wondering, but he was rebuilding the stable. That's what it is. 
So that's definitely not the Lancer he had at the beginning of the game. Beautiful trample one more time. Lourdes is diving in crazily, uh, but he's not focusing down Haldir. Lourdes is a one-man army, boys. Lourdes is a one-man army, boys. Haldir is gonna experience that himself. You could also use the... He wasn't paying attention. He was able to use the cripple, but he was just a little bit too lazy. Oh, he's gonna use cripple anyway. Pew! Two hits with the arrows. Kill him! Kill him! No, he's not gonna risk the biscuit. Heal is on cooldown. That means he could have killed him, actually. He's almost level 5 as well. Level 5 is gonna unlock the leadership from Lutz. As the furnace for now is protected with the Warc Riders being around. We see multiple level 2 furnaces, but in the moment... The Alvin player Mustafa has 825 command points collected, while Isengard is down to 575 only. And he also went for a Tainted Land. I don't know about that. Why don't you go for the Devastation? I mean, what you need in this matchup eventually is Saruman. Saruman is very reliable. Once you get him level 2, you can always use the, your distance, your, you know, keep the distance and use Fireball over and over and over again. But beautiful trample though into the ranges, I like that. Tainted Land is also not bad, don't get me wrong. It's gonna give you also pillage ability, which means every time you kill enemy units, once you are on your own Tainted Land, you will also get money. And of course, in compared to the Tainted Land from the Goblin slash Mordor faction, this one is also reloading way way faster. Of course, which makes kinda sense, because this costs you 10 power points, and the Tainted Land from the Goblins and Mordor will only cost you 5. Has the same cooldown lock like the Alvin would. Alvin Wood doesn't give you pillage, but gives you fear resistant, which can also be nice in some matchups. For example, against Mordor or against Man of the West once he has Boromir level 2. That's a big commitment, but I believe he won't be able to destroy this Malone 3 level almost 3 just yet. Tainted Land was kinda blown away for no reason. The power points are rising to this guy. I still believe that you know the devastation would be the better choice. And Isengard has to be careful now because. Oh, riding it down into the pikeman. There are just too many units. One trample is incoming from the lanes at the same time. The power points are rising to the sky, and that's what he needs to be afraid of because he's getting closer and closer for the eagle summon from the spellbook. And now, he has multiple Mirkwoods on the field, aka the best archers in the game, which is not gonna make it easy for Isengard to win those fights anymore. Long story short, he will not be able to match the elven army in strength. Unless you outspam them, out macro them big time in a normal even fight, the Mirkwoods are always going to be out damaging your army. Your crossbow men or extrovers can't handle them. That's not possible. They have the longest distance, they have the crazy amount of DPS. And I mean long story short, they are hitting like a truck. That's what it is. 13 power points collected. Look at this Mirkwoods, guys. Like even the pikes which are supposed to want oh but <laughs> on the other side they are vulnerable <laughs> beautiful trample from the war riders he has to do that over and over again he has to kill this as asap guys he went for a devastation now oh that's a mistake from major effects i mean he needs that of course but picking tainted land and devastation that means investment of 20 power points into two of 10 will delay your 15 and your 25 which can be of course a dragon strike or the summon dragon or 15 can be Freezing Rain or the Watcher, for example, both really reliable as well as the Field of Fires for the resource boost. But he's like almost 11 power points away from that point, and the Uruk Pet has been taken down. Clan setting has to be replaced. Eventually, Extrovers need to be recruited. Extrovers, they are supposed to be good against the enemy archers, but the problem is they are getting out of range big time from the Mirkwoods. They are technically able to deal decent amount of damage to the Mirkwoods once they get the chance to do that. However, the Mirkwoods most of the time are able to kill them before they get anywhere close to them, you know? Warchan is almost available. Uh, I mean, it's available. Kribin is available. Tainted Line is almost back up. On the other side, ladies and gentlemen, Mustafa has the power points he needs for the Eagle Special Summon. Which is not only good against units or heroes, but also good against the Fortress itself. And he has only ballistas, which are not able to shoot down the eagles. That's why he needs potentially some arrow towers. And Warm Tongue is going to be his choice. I don't think that this is gonna put a big difference on you. Sorry, Hisoka, but... Warm Tongue? He has to commit. Does he have leadership? Yeah, he has almost leadership. Mist is available. Mist is gonna nullify the leadership anyway. 
Lourdes is diving in though, we gotta, we gotta keep an eye on Lourdes. Lourdes has the carnage, which will give him the splash damage. The ballistas are shooting, that's why the ground is shaking. But look at Lourdes, before he's able to do anything, he's gonna get bursted down from the pikeman. Lourdes is gone, guys. Look at the power points from the album player. How can you out damage the Mirkwoods now? Tell me that much. They are having leadership with Haldir being around. They are debuffing you because of the mist. And they have the buff from the rallying call. They have 83% damage and you lose 25% damage. Cloudbreak is gonna be his choice. Very questionable. Why, 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 why? I mean, to, <laughs> he stuns nothing, by the way. But well, that's gonna give some time for actually Major of X, if he doesn't give up, of course. Because the Alvin army is not gonna be able to take down this fortress any soon, trust me. The lack of damage against buildings is real. And what you can always do, and by the way, I've seen this once or twice, it's kinda nuts. If you buy the fire munitions on the fortress upgrade here, to make these ballistas hit harder, boys, they can one-shot the eagles. One sh literally. And always, Give them aggressive stance. Why? Because that's going to increase their range too by 10%. 15% actually. So they're going to shoot from a... You know, in a longer distance. <laughs> if he doesn't give up. Yeah, I mean, he's down a lot, you know. We might see a GG incoming very soon from the... Isengard player. Now he has even upgrades on the units. Forge is level 3. And that means Silvertown Arrows is purchased. And now watch the... Battle for Middle Earth game turning into a reforged game. <laughs> Not reforged. Matrix. Because now you won't see the classical arrows anymore, but you will see you will see laser guns. You know, pew pew pew. You watch this now. Watch this now. They have leadership by the way, but good luck dealing with the Mirikwoods now, boys. They have uh, I mean armor from the Painted Lands. While while Alvin Army has no armor because the riding call is on cooldown. Trample ain't be gone, the enemy army. This guy is so funny. The way he's looking is so funny, dude. Run, Grima. Run for your life. Run to your master. I mean, the Balisas are doing a nice job. Lourdes is back in the, on the field. He's level 5. Has leadership, but there are no units nearby to give leadership to. That's the big problem he has. <laughs> okay. 575. He has still, you know, a couple of... Great protected furnaces, level 3, level 3, so he's getting some decent amount of money with Devastation, almost back up, he can use it again, get even more money. But Mustafa is actually shining bright like a diamond, yes. Mustafa is doing a fantastic job. He was doing a nice job also in the previous game, against dwarves, as Engmar, but as Isengard right up. And now he's also playing the Alvin faction against the Isengard faction and also doing a phenomenal job. It was Golden Arrow, right? Yeah, he was using Golden Arrow for his stun. So now the Elven army has multiple stuns. Golden Arrow from Hydra is a stun and the Cloudbreak from the Spellbook is a stun too. Even Lourdes can't match this much power. He's full health now, but watch what's gonna happen. He's right-clicking on the Cripple. And this is not BFME 1. If you do that on BFME 1, he's gonna cripple a Lumber Mill Worker. But in this game, he's gonna prioritize always heroes. Automatically. So the Smart Cast is actually smart in this game, in compared to BFME 1. Never click on an ability, right click on an ability in BFM1, guys. If you right click on Gandalf's with a plus, he's gonna go and find some lumber mill workers to blast them. Because they have, like, just don't. Don't even try. Batman of Dunland, level 1. I mean, maybe the Watcher can do something. The Watcher is very good against this army. Yeah, this war, those midgoods are wiping the, this floor. Exactly, crazy answer. Many, many ballistas are coming up. He has 18 power points collected. The flood will kill every single expansion in no time. All he can is try to hope that he has not the damage output to kill those level 3 furnaces yet. And with the expansions around, he might be able to defend himself. The counterattack is happening now. Listen to my words. Listen to my words. It's an active debuff on enemy units to make them lose their leadership bonuses. Big fight. Pikeman in the front. Beautiful trample with the lancers. They have also the forge plates as well as banner upgrade incoming. They can also buy the. Uh, never mind. He actually never purchased the elven armor yet. Five more power points needed only. And Isengard needs two more power points for the Vacha summon. Once the Vacha is ready, we gotta pay attention because the Vacha, once again, has the potential to one shot this whole army. 
Lourdes giving leadership. It's a bad fight to take, but I, I believe Elvon Play is just trying to get power points now. 860 command points available from Mustafa. It sounds crazy, I know, but this game isn't over yet. Elvin Play is not having any siege weapons, so I don't see him being able to commit against that any soon. 15 power points collected now. Commitment, he's going for the Watcher. The Watcher might be used here, beautiful Watchers. I mean, I mean, he won't kill too much, but it was essential to keep this level 3 furnace protected. One of his most important furnaces would make him lose 100 command points because level 3 resource buildings are giving you 100 command points. Yet, he was not able to kill too much. One Mirkwood was able to survive, one Pikeman and one normal Lorian Archer. And the Watcher has a huge cooldown. But on the other side, Elven player Mustafa is only 2.5 power points away from his 25, which again might or will be potentially the flood. Use it on the fortress to one-shot every single expansion, and then it's gonna also deal massive damage to the fortress, by the way. Then you can commit against that. But the ends the question is with what? What you wanna use for committing? Mirkwoods? No, I don't think so. Mirkwoods are dealing no damage against Fortress. That's the biggest weakness of the Silvertone arrows. Look at but their power is lying on killing on the units, you know what I'm saying? Very powerful. And the power points are rising to the sky. Lourdes is running for his life. 26, almost 27 power points collected. The Cloud Break is almost back up as well. Isengard has no fear resistance. The only way you can do that with Isengard is getting Saruman on the field and getting him level 5. Golden Arrow will be used to stun the nearby enemy units to keep the Mirik Woods protected. And the power points are rising to almost 30, ladies and gentlemen. Cloud Break was used right after, after for the global stun. While Golden Arrow is stunning in an area like this, Cloudbreak is able to stun all the units in the entire map if they have no fear resistant or are not level 5. And we are waiting. I mean, ideally you want to also go for the end summon, you know? End summon is essential to take down the fortress. Or build your end, build yourself a end smooth, which is always an option too. And he's going for the eagle summon, okay? Eagle summon. He knows that these Ballistas are not able to target the Eagles. That's why he needs some towers. The level 3 furnace has been taken down. Uh, Lourdes is gonna try to damage them too. But they are able to deal decent amount of damage to the fortress. But will they be able to destroy it? Look at the Mirkwood damage against the Ballista expansion though. That's crazy. Listen to my words maybe. He has to use the active debuff. I believe the Eagles are not gonna be able to finish this. One Eagle only remaining. But he has enough power points, almost for the 25 anyway, as Grima is going down. The fortress the is extremely low. Heal has been used to keep Hydeer level 10 protected. He's going down now. He's gonna call it GG finally. As the power points are almost 25. And Major of X will be losing also as Isengard against the Alvin faction player, Mustafa, for a 2-0 victory so far. But it's BFME 2, enough Rise of Division. After we are done with this uh, tournament, you will see lots of BFME 2 on this channel, Luxus. Stay tuned, my dude. Stay tuned. We are almost done. We have only a couple of games left. We have the Blue Dwarven player Mustafa Sito, <laughs> who's the winner. He was undefeated today at the bottom side or right side. On the other side, we see Red Isengard player Major of Hanks building up two furnaces. Kribane start. I'm assuming he's going for the Warp Pit. Yep, he does. And yeah, look, we see the work pit starts now more and more often because the work packs once again are actually quite efficient. And a pretty normal start here from the Dwarven player. No aggressive style. He's not building the second mineshaft aggressively. But I believe that's one of the situations in, I believe, which the work packs are not gonna be able to match with the strong work packs. I mean, with the strong guardians, I believe. The only way you can win against them is when they are not buffed, I believe. We will see about that. You need to use Hole and Creepin at the same time to be able to outdamage them eventually, but Guardians are tough boys, you know? But once again, their weakness is the lack of mobility. They are the slowest swordsmen in the game. Rallying Call is available. And Creepin is available. Creepin, always choose Creepin when you start with the Warp, pack, warp Pit. Because you can't, you can, but it's not gonna work. You can't, you shouldn't. Let's call it shouldn't use the whole ability with the Warchan together. 
Another furnace is coming up. Are you still rank 1 in uh, Luxus? And uh, did you not play against Sauron anymore? I was able to see the games between, between Exidion against uh, Andy Brandy. I was able to cast them even. And Andy Brandy was destroying Archangel and also he was winning against Ectelion. So I would love to see that. You versus Sauron or you versus Andy Brandy. Looks like you want to creep the Warclair. There is a mineshaft coming up from Mustafa. Okay. Let's see. They're gonna get level 2. That's pretty nice. Very, very nice. There is a furnace. The builder is... I don't know what the builder is doing. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's nice to see you here again. All right, let's go. Looks like meat's back in the money, boys. No more yabba dabba do for you, builder. And he will also be level 2. But there is a mineshaft. He needs pikemen. With pikemen, he can make something happen. That's what he's waiting for. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Yes, looks like meets back in the mon money, boys. He has two guardians and one pikeman is gonna enjoy uh, the party. Join the party, not enjoy the party. And Knights of Knights of Gondor. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream, Knights of Gondor. Are you a Knight of Gondor for Bar for Faramir, the Captain of Gondor? Are you here to finally show your quality? Big rallying call, big push. But he has three work packs. Is this gonna be a uh, enough to defend? He has to avoid fighting the mighty. Pikeman. All he needs to do, or all he can really do, is destroy this mineshaft first. That means dwarves can't bring in reinforcements, but he has one more mineshaft around this side. And then he has to try to fight against the guy. Against the power of Mordor, there can be no victory. Against the power of Mordor, there can be no victory. Christopher Lee he has an amazing voice, this dude. Okay. Big fight. Urukai are strong. Kribane is doing a fantastic job debuffing the enemy units, of course. And I believe he will be able to hold himself. Isengard play is in a good spot. And maybe that's a proof that dwarves are in a bad spot right now. Big cry every day. My man, don't cry, always smile. Welcome to the stream regardless. This is a stream in which you are not gonna cry. You're gonna enjoy and smile. Um, have you read the books too or only the movies? So far only the films. I was never reading the books unfortunately. I'm always looking forward to read that. But every every time something happens. But I will hopefully and eventually soonish be able to read the books. Even though I talked to many many people who were able to read the books multiple times. And they were t you know telling me the differences between the books and the films. So I know a little bit. not But not from my own perspective or experience but much more about the, from the people who are able to read the books multiple times you should read them they hit like a track yeah i will i will i have a problem you know when i when i start reading the books i will be reading them until i'm done and i'm gonna just be reading books all the time it's gonna call it gg already mustafa knows mustafa knows we have the red man of the west player major of x against the blue ingmar player Mustafa at the bottom side. Two mine shafts coming up. On the other side, we see two farms. This is gonna be a nice matchup. I like that. Man of the West player can win this one. But will he win this one? That is the big question. When do the points come in? Now. <laughs> we'll get some points now, guys. You get multiple points. There we go. I'm, I feel generous today. These points are for the stream element store, and everyone listen to me now carefully, guys. If you missed the, up, uh, the you know the last streams, if a store, and you are passively able to earn points by watching the stream, and once you collected enough points, there is a bunch of stuff you can make, for now, but there will be a lot of more stuff you can get by investing your points, which doesn't cost you anything. You will get them for free by just watching this, but watching the stream. All you gotta be, all you gotta do is being a follower on this channel. And you are able in long terms to get Steam gift cards, hopefully some free merch once we are able to set this up, which is gonna be great looking. So it's gonna be a t-shirt with like hitting like a truck or trust me on that one, which you will also get for free by just watching this stream. But for now, you are only able to get the Steam gift cards. Again, free. 
Bali uh, Anius, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. And Valfium, welcome. Hey, Tapful, welcome. I just uh, say I just I saw Major of X would win, but I didn't get the points. You did. Bet were closing already. I think in, uh, either Kit uh, Kitira or Parindru were closing the bet. Oh, that's a very interesting opening actually from the Man of the West play Major of X. He is starting with the Archer range. That's a very passive playstyle. And that's not going to work very nicely against Engma because Engma can always get those wolf packs quite fast on the field. Uh, maybe you need to refresh your browser, sorry. Because normally you got the points. 3 days and 14 hours, my man, Son Goku. Hitting like a Kamehameha, my dude. Archer range. Arches for defense, and then he has to recruit some pikemen to keep the arches protected against the trample of the wolf riders. But that also means that Major of X is able to do whatever he wants. Archer versus wolf pack, yeah, of course. Archer versus wolf pack. Archer wins, but I'm so, I was. I mean, maybe I was misspeaking. I meant the wolf riders. Almost two days, Mr. Crap Eye. Almost two days. He will be able to. Uh, he will be able to creep this one. Uncontested, of course, because you know, Major of X is kind of, kind of camping a bit. Once again, the power of Ingma, Wolfpack slash Wolf Riders, X Trowers, Gundabad Warriors, Pikemen, and this all from two buildings. And he, those are your two primary production buildings. And the weakness of the Man of the West faction is, you know, that you need at least three production buildings to do the same stuff. But Engma can do with two production buildings all alone. You need one additional one. You need the Archer Range, Barracks, and the Stable for that. Hey Gulag, welcome, my dude. Long time no see, how are you doing today? 40 minutes watching, hey man. Can be better, can be better, will be better hopefully. And 50 minutes watching, well fiam. 50 minutes, almost an hour my friend. He's creeping, nice Rallying call, is almost, uh, rallying call was used actually for defense around this area. You will also be able to creep this and also this one at the same time. The wolf packs are going for an attack. Are they able to shoot from the roof? And now the Barindru is coming in clutch. But where, is, where are the real guys? Like where is my Benzi and where is my Isoka? To break. I believe Hisoka was watching me for like one year. In, in hours only. 450 and 500 for Isengard. Oh, oh, okay. Snow trolls, ladies and gentlemen. And also, Invam Yora is coming in clutch with the troll emoji. Oh, man. The wolf packs. Who oh, let the wolves out? Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Like, you can commit here, you can commit here, you can commit here. I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> Like, it's so, it's so easy now for the Engma player to commit against this farm. It has almost no protection. You need to build it a bit closer to the farms. To the farm, in this case, to have some better protection, you know? But it looks like he will be going for the creep at the top right side, the troll layer. We have two of these, top right and bottom left. And we have one work layer around this area, and that's pretty much it. All the other creeps are gone. And Man of the West player is actually holding himself quite nicely. And he has also now some rangers on the field. However... In order to counter the enemy snow trolls, which are the most expensive, but also unique, uh, see it, very unique cavalry units from the Engma faction, you need to get some tower guards on the field instead of this plap. Oh, Hans Spearman, trust me. Because these units, they are the tankiest by far. They are extremely, extremely tanky. They have the biggest HP bar. Just avoid, abuse the movement speed, and go for one more trample. The micro is in, in very important when you are, you know, commanding those fast-moving units. And uh, the Man of the West player is forced to retreat. Warchan is still active on these units. If he doesn't do anything about the situation, he will be losing quite a lot. The farm here, which has nearly any protection, will be taken down first. There comes the Man of the West army from the bottom right side, though. The counter-attack. But I believe this attack is gonna hit even harder. The farm is going down first. He needs more units. ASEP boys. 
Rangers, Tower Guards. That's the combination you are looking for in this situation. To have the elite units from the Man of the West faction. Once again, the Rohan Spearmen, they are cheaper, yes, but they are also way, way weaker. They will die in no time to this extra verse while Tower Guards can stand and fight. Talking about standing and fighting, that is the captain of Gondor, Boromir, the son of Denethor, the favorite <laughs> son of Denethor. I felt so bad for Faramir. I would actually love to know, I mean, we have seen a couple of cutscenes in the extended edition between, uh, between Boromir and Faramir. You know, when, when he, the flashback scene, when they were showing the, the fight, it, uh, you know, was Gilead, when Boromir was having a speech. For Gondor, for Gondor, you know? But other than that, we have not seen them side by side, of course, because Boromir got killed in the Fellowship of the Ring, and we have seen Faramir only in the two towers, that's why. Mirhia is gonna be taking on almost level 2, that's pretty nice. He's also killing a lot of units at the very same time. But I guess not like Kadesh Moshkadi. Late rebuild, oh, was, oh my goodness, he was using rebuild even for that one? Really? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. So, about the PowerPoint spellbook, uh, I believe Dwarves and Men of the West are the only two factions without the land. So, Engma is frozen land, Elvin Wood for Elves, Goblins, Mordor and Isengard the Tinted Land. But Men of the West and Dwarves, they have no lands. They are landless. Turkey, we almost in Turkey, my cardis. Magonda! Magonda! Boromir! Let's zoom in. Magonda! He is the captain of Gondor, who was leading the armies of Gondor to victory during the fight in Minas Tirith. You will see the glory days of Gondor once again, but in the in the heaven, because he got killed from Lourdes in the films. No, one more? No, 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 no. 6.25 for men and 6.25 for England. That's evil. That's evil. Okay, but at some point I believe the Engma player will also need... Oh, he's going for the banner. But he needs to get this to level 3. To be able to recruit the Dark Rangers. Uh oh, for Gondo. Be stunned. And Karsh has to be recruited if you want to have Fear Resistant, which is the only way for Engma to get Fear Resistant, by the way. As yes, the Snow Trolls are running it down. They are running into the pikemen. I don't know what's going on through their minds. Can't tell. More units are coming in the meantime. Engma has an has a army at the bottom left side, but they are not nearby yet. And also Eomir. <laughs> <laughs> For Gondor! Eomir is walking, it's so funny when he's actually dismounted. For Gondor! Hey, Nikki Bear, welcome. Love to see Boromir showing his quality. Yes, Boromir always shows his quality, unlike Faramir. Oh, that's a big clump, though. But he has not en enough elite units on the field, that's the problem. Where are the rangers talking about elite units? He has only gone. He got the, he got the archery range level 2? Nah! Am I bl guys, did I not see ranges before? Did he actually lose the archer range level 2? What? I think I missed something because I can swear that he had like archer range level 2. It was destroyed. Okay, I was not paying attention. Then. My bad. Oh, Eomi has level 2 now. He has spear throw, which can be nice against Engma, by the way, because you can target the trauma master units. Late reveal, okay, I was, that was what, what you guys... Oh, the Felvind! Oh my goodness! Okay, actually, that was horrible. <laughs> I thought, the thing is, they are invulnerable, I believe, when... Oh, the spear throw, they are invulnerable. What happened there? How? No pikemen and the snow throws got killed in no time. Let your kids watch it! Hey, hey, don't let your kids watch that! Boromir, Horn of Gondor once again. Boromir is here to finally show his quality. But he has no pikemen. Where are the... Oh my goodness, more units are coming. What is he doing with the army? I don't know why he was not moving. He's standing there for like one minute now. Come on, move, 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 move. This tower is doing a nice job. He missed the war chant too. Or he was he war chanting the tower for the extra wars. But look at the damage from Boromir and Eomir's side by side. A scenario we have not seen in the films, because Boromir once again got killed 
from Lourdes in the first full movie and also Elmia, just like Faramir was joining the party in the two towers, not in the Fellowship of the Ring. Talking about Elmia, Elmia is paying attention and will get in safety. Actually, Mustafa is losing a lot. He, I don't know, this guy is like needing one hour to move from this side to this side. I cannot believe that the tower is down. By the way, the Warchan is on cooldown. Hobbit summon for the reinforcements from the Shire. GG is gonna be called from Mustafa. And what a what a fantastic performance from Mayshir of X. Being 2-0 behind and managing to win two games in a row to make the score dead even again. 